what postpartum depression really looks like. This is part one of a series that I'm doing on women's mental health. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and this channel is about mental health, education, and self-improvement. This video is based on a viewer question from Dr. Mohammed El Sharif, who's an obstetrician and gynecologist with his own YouTube channel. He wanted me to help his viewers understand postpartum depression. Perinatal depression refers to depression that occurs before, during, and after pregnancy. During pregnancy, it's called antenatal depression, and any time within four to six weeks after giving birth, it's called postpartum depression. Many more women, though, develop baby blues, which is mostly sadness, irritability, and sleeping problems, but baby blues resolves within the first 10 days. Postpartum depression has a deeper level of sadness, hopelessness, or worthlessness, and trouble functioning that lasts much longer. The symptoms can last weeks to months. For some women, this can be the start of a recurring illness that comes back in the future and, and lasts for months or years. The depression that can happen postpartum generally has the same symptoms as a depression that's not related to pregnancy. And this would be symptoms like depressed mood, poor appetite, poor sleep. And the poor sleep would be trouble sleeping when your baby is sleeping. You can also have irritability, decreased appetite, and suicidality. And these symptoms can show up within the first 72 hours after you give birth. So it can come on fast. That's what a typical depression would look like. But here's a more subtle way postpartum depression can look, and this is how it can interfere with your child's development. When anyone gets depressed, you become more self-focused and ruminative, and that means you overfocus on the negative thoughts. These thoughts don't have to be negative things in your life, it can just be negative thoughts that you have about yourself or your baby. And because you're caught up in this negative, dark world in your head, on the outside, you can have less positive emotional expression with your baby. And even if you feel bad and think you can fake it just by smiling, you really can't do it as well as you think you can because the emotional expression that your baby senses from you involves more than smiling. It's many more nonverbal expressions like eye contact and body language. It takes an incredible amount of emotional resources to effectively communicate with a nonverbal baby. And when you're not depressed and have a normal interaction with your baby, it's like you're one with your child. Over time, you're able to distinguish between the cry that means he's sleepy versus hungry, in pain, or just fussy. And all those cries and facial expressions are different. And when you're not depressed, you're tuned into it in a way that you can distinguish all those little noises from one another and know how to meet your baby's needs. But when you're depressed and you're caught up in the negative thoughts in your head, you're less sensitive to these cues. You, you just don't get it. It's all the same crying to you that you're not able to do much about, which makes you a failure. It confirms that you're not good at this. Your baby is just trying to make your life miserable, etc. This depressed state has negative effects on your baby. It results in poor infant bonding, difficult temperament, <laughs> and behavior problems. There's also an increased risk of, cog of compromised cognitive function. What causes postpartum depression? We don't know exactly what causes it, but some researchers have proposed, though, that it's related to dropping hormone levels after giving birth. But there are some things that are associated with increasing your chances of getting it. It's estimated that 10 to 20 percent of women develop postpartum depression, just so you know. And here are some of the risk factors. Thyroid dysfunction, having a previous episode of depression. And it's important to note, though, that if you don't have an episode of depression after your first pregnancy, it doesn't mean that you're safe from having another episode in the future because another risk factor is having multiple pregnancies. Also, having pre-existing bipolar disorder really increases the risk of having another one of your episodes after giving birth. 
So if you have bipolar disorder before you get pregnant, you have a 25 to 40% chance of having one of your episodes of depression or mania appearing after birth. In fact, bipolar disorder increases your risk of postpartum psychosis. And this is a very dangerous state and usually requires hospitalization to protect you and your baby from harm. It's in this state that you can harm your baby because you're not thinking rationally. Some Canadian researchers recently found an association between asthma and postpartum depression. And it's thought that this connection might be related to inflammation affecting your asthma as well as causing your depression. So postpartum depression doesn't have to come from a single cause. It's probably a combination of physical and emotional factors, but it doesn't happen because of something you do or don't do correctly. Many moms can feel a lot of shame and guilt because they aren't happy like people expect you to be. You've got this precious baby, yet when you look at him, you don't feel joy, you feel anger, or you cry every morning in the shower. And you can really feel as though something's wrong with who you are as a person, instead of realizing that this is an illness affecting how you think. It's not who you are, you have a thinking problem. Taking care of a newborn is hard. You're sleep deprived and you're probably stressed out. So how can you tell if you have this problem? Some women don't realize that something is wrong. You just figure that this is just how it is. A popular screening tool is the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale. It's 10 questions that takes about five minutes to complete. It's been used in research studies um, to, and, and it's considered a good indicator of postpartum depression. And some doctors will use it to screen patients for depression. If your doctor doesn't use it, it's easy to find on the internet and you can take it yourself. If you, and the test will even tell you how to score yourself. If you score high, take the results to your doctor. How is postpartum depression treated? Can you take medications while you're breastfeeding? That's what I'm gonna talk about in the next video, which is part two in this series on women's mental health. So check out the next video. See you next time.